I write out bounties and then people will apply to those bounties. And currently we are using Dwork. And I actually, I much more value the on-chain profile of those people other than the text or the LinkedIn, whatever, whatever they write me. I've, I've had cases where like somebody is like, hey, I'm a data scientist at Google. And then he's not able to complete the task. And and then there's like some unknown crypto people, 69, who, who's like, who has like an established contributor profile and kind of like a, a range of Web3 credentials. In my experience, those people are usually way better at solving these tasks because they have all the relevant context. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of New Forum, where we bring you awesome guests, creators, visionaries, and investors on our Web3 podcast. And on today's episode, we have Florian Bart, aka Boxer on Twitter, who is handling the community and wizard relationships at Dune Analytics. Dune is a platform focused on crypto analytics by and for the community. And I'm super happy to talk with Florian about data, decentralized graph, and yeah, what he's working on at Dune. Hi, Florian. Happy to have you on today. Hello. Yeah, very happy to uh, be on here and uh, happy to share my knowledge around Dune. Yeah. So, Florian, we would love to know, like, what is your background and how did you came to uh, work at Dune and what is the current focus that you have there? My background is traditionally business administration. So I studied uh, business administration, but during those studies, I kind of focused on business information systems and business information systems is basically what we do at Dune. It's a very kind of lame way to put it, but um, basically what Dune offers you to do is create business information systems on blockchain protocols using on-chain data. And kind of through that connection that I had made, I was able to very easily kind of onboard myself into this world of uh, Web3 business information systems. What am I currently doing at Dune? I'm mostly focused on uh, coordinating the ecosystem around Dune nowadays. So next to like just doing like basic developer relations, which is basically answering questions and being knowledgeable about our product, but also kind of finding ways for the Web3 ecosystem uh, and especially in the Dune context to come together and align on metrics and work together to, to kind of surface all the data that we have available to us in Web3. I think this is really interesting because we've seen like, uh, you know, the crypto space is a really new space and there's so much data right now that's uh, coming out and to understand and process and use this data is really important. So I'm wondering, how do you structure this on an everyday basis? Like, do you take research from outside and how do you, let's say you come up with a proposal question or a topic that you want to research, how do you structure this kind of data flow? So for Dune, it's mostly driven by our ecosystem partners. So I'm, for example, currently working with Avalanche and um, BNB chain um, to kind of um, host bounties that will in turn incentivize the Dune community to align on standards across uh, these respective ecosystems. So for example, there's a table in Dune. So Dune is a database in the end. Um, so there's one table in Dune, which is called uh, NFT.trades. And in that table, we kind of standardize and normalize the data of NFT marketplaces um, across chains and like across all the marketplaces so that then in turn, the rest of the community and the wider ecosystem um, can easily work and analyze this data. So yeah, we, we're very much driven by narratives in the market, which is like what is currently interesting to people and then also by uh, our ecosystem partners. Basically, you take all this data and you're coming up with like um, reports and things that trends that are kind of emerging and from from your perspective I mean we had quite a year of I would say DAOs and NFTs what do you reckon is like are the current trends that you see kind of emerging we've been in the uh, beer market for a while so I'm curious to know so web3 social and web3 reputation that is really interesting so w what is Lens doing how many losers does Lens have uh, Farcaster um, but then also on-chain reputation uh, things like Rabbit Hole or uh, Layer 3, um, all of those organizations, Dwork kind of um, gives you badges for completing tasks. Um, I think there's a lot of movement in those areas. DAOs, always a recurring topic. Um, who, who's voting in DAOs? Who's even still participating in these DAOs? The numbers of active voters have really dropped. It's uh, it's quite a sad, uh, sad, sad picture out there. 
I will get there. Um, then another trend um, in DeFi, perpetuals. Um, that was really interesting uh, to kind of observe and, and, and see that thing grow, which is basically influenced by the mistrust of centralized exchanges. So now those traders who usually use centralized exchanges, they are kind of venturing on chain. So we're seeing a lot of activity that's kind of shifting to, to, to on chain. So that's really interesting to observe. I, I think it's always cool to see like you have the facts, right? Like people who work with data, they have the facts and you, you know, you see the marketing side of things, you know, the projects going um, in the public eye, but I feel like it's always so interesting to see like the real, like the real deal behind the scenes. And um, you talked a bit about like uh, something I would say is like social capital that is building like, you know, badges, credentials, uh, people are really trying to step into that field. And I'm wondering how does this like decentralized graph like play a role into that like we are seeing like a decentralized graph building of knowledge of cultural capital and how does this like further the the cr creative economy or do you think that diminishes the creative economy i can kind of tell you about my own experience with these yeah. um on-chain reputation systems so at dune we we basically so i i write out bounties and then people will apply to those bounties and currently we are using dwork and I actually, I much more value the on-chain profile of those people other than the text or the LinkedIn, whatever, whatever they write me. I've, I've had cases where like somebody is like, hey, I'm a data scientist at Google. And then he's not able to complete the task. And, and then there's like some unknown crypto people, 69, who's like, who has like an established contributor profile and kind of like a, a range of Web3 credentials. In my experience, those people are usually way better at solving these tasks because they have all the relevant context. Um, so Web3 is very much like, especially Web3 data analysis, it's very much about context because so many things kind of click into each other. So like having that context is really, really valuable. And if I could, I would ask every applicant for their kind of main wallet and check what they've done on chain. But usually people do spin up uh, individual wallets for contributing to, to projects. And it's still so crazy to me, like what you just said, like from your perspective, you are used to this kind of language, you're used to like, like on chain kind of movements, but I feel like there's still like the broad public and people who are not really like into that space. So I'm wondering, do you think like with now brands, like we have quite a number of brands moving into the Web3 space, um, do you think that 2023 or 2024, it will go mainstream? Or do you think people are still skeptical of certain parts of crypto yeah i think a lot of the web 2 brands or traditional brands that moved into the space they basically did this as kind of a marketing thing and kind of trying new things out i haven't really seen like any deep integrations Mo most of the things were just like marketing projects there's no real like substantial value uh, that has been created there's always this tweet of like i think the pepsi account like kind of tweeting good morning or, or like welcome welcome friend or some like that was like the state of like all the kind of web 2 crypto integrations i think um nike and adidas have done interesting things in regards to their nft collections and kind of making these things happen um there's a huge momentum going around like with the board ape yacht club i'm i'm kind of like excited to see what what they'll develop in the future because that actually translated into like real world things. But most of the things were just like experiments. And I think most of the Web2 companies, basically they they don't really understand yet what the space is about. And also if you look at it from a consumer or data perspective or user perspective, what kind of deep knowledge you can you can get of your uh of your users um if you if you use the right tools and kind of that you are able to analyze deeply your your users. Yeah, I, th I think also something that was really interesting for me is some of these uh, Web3 projects, like, for example, Reddit, they did an avatar project. And I think uh, Legion actually published a study where it says, oh, all of the wallets that hold these avatars, they're not really exchanging the goods. They're really just holding and hodling um, these NFTs. And I feel like, I mean, I, I you're probably more an expert on this than me, but I feel like there's still not this kind of like commerce is not really about exchanging in some way it's still about okay i'm collecting this rare piece or i'm holding this amount of value and i'm holding on to it for the next two years maybe correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like that's really so we're not really there yet where there's like a fluid exchange of things in a way I, maybe you have some more insights on it i'm curious um 
I think there was some trading on the Reddit NFT avatars, but really not that much. Uh, I think that assessment is quite correct. But it's interesting to kind of think about that this avatar maybe is a part of their identity almost. And that's a part of their identity that they actually own in a self-custodial wallet. It's not uh, Reddit can just rock them, but rather they actually own this asset and they can kind of take this reputation into other systems as well. So I, I think that's definitely very promising. And, and maybe that's even a sign that this system is working as intended, where it's um, supposed to kind of signal status or signal some kind of value of the holder uh, or like mm, signal participation in a system or make them feel more as part of a community. So yeah, I, I, I think the use case of, of, of kind of NFT collecting just for the sake of participation or or access to like access gating i think those those things will probably be adopted more by web3 native companies and then in turn I, I think that will kind of trickle down to to web2 companies as well and i'm curious because also we you know ai is on the trend right now like you probably like analyze a couple of ai things and i'm wondering like what kind of trends do you see emerge there i mean we heard a lot about you know chat gbt and everything going on but um, do you think AI is going to dominate the space right now? or I think it's quite natural for the crypto space to also be interested in the AI space because by nature of like being in the Web3 space, you're kind of like a curious person who's like interested in tech uh, and, and like on the bleeding edge of things. And that naturally kind of translates to um, everyone is also interested in AI. Um, but I don't think there's a like of those people actually contributing to Web3, there isn't anyone kind of going like into deep AI research or like leaving leaving the space. I think there's a lot of synergies to be had between between AI and crypto. I, I don't quite know where they lie yet, but there's this argument that opponents of AI art put forward of um, nobody, like all of these artists don't get paid for yeah. the AI kind of looking at their at their work and learning from that. And crypto basically, because there is this clear ownership of of like this this artist has released this piece and maybe if they yeah, the ai um uses that piece for its uh, machine learning model to then produce other art from that maybe there could be like a cutback uh from that which i think solves a lot of things because currently there's no clear attribution graph between um who produced the art and then the ai actually consuming it um so there's a lot of like those things are kind of interesting and then yeah. I, I guess like computational models and like how would an ai like act as an independent actor i think a lot of things there could be enabled by crypto but that's probably like a conversation to be had five years down the line i think for now it's pretty much like the the same kind of people are interested in crypto and ai and that's probably like the the, the like range of overlap we have right now but they'll definitely be interesting kind of experiments and and yeah we'll we'll, we'll see I mean, I gotta, I gotta uh, confess that I sometimes use it for like mundane old tasks, you know, <laughs> like I ask some questions and there's actually pretty good answers and um, you'd be surprised. But like you said, um, we had this complaint or this kind of criticism as well about from artists saying that, hey, what if this is like 80% my original and I don't even get anything from it or this is just being used within the mix and I think it's definitely something that we should like you said they should get the ownership from it um from from you and I would love to know like what kind of things are you guys working on right now or focusing on right now within your research it's a lot of Im improving existing um data quality so basically we have really good data sets for Ethereum mainnet but kind of scaling that up across uh, Solana and I think seven different EVM chains. That's definitely a challenge. And Web3 data is never easy. There's always kind of this, this long tail, like getting it directionally correct is very easy, but then getting the long tail right, that's always an adventure and a journey. So yeah, that's definitely something we're working on. We're like always working on improving our infrastructure, uh, improving query speeds, uh, kind of making the, the whole experience of um, getting access and, and gaining knowledge um, from this Web3 data easier. And then also kind of like diffusing maybe the the border between like the Dune team and the community and kind of like, especially this data curation layer. Um, we are 
like more and more thinking about that the community should take more ownership and have more say in govern like kind of governing that data. But yeah, it's all ongoing conversations. Um, currently, it's mostly us, not mostly like we are governing the data, but our community actively contributes to it. And then there's like, how, how, where, where do we put the border of like, what should, what should be the responsibility of the Dune team and what should be the responsibility of the community? How do we get more kind of ecosystem participants to, to, to like also play into the system? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of interesting things and like a lot of things that can also be solved using Web3 tools. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to kind of experimenting the next uh, few months and, and figuring those things out. Sounds kind of like a DAO to me a bit, yeah, so <laughs> um, like a tiny bit. So um, yeah, we are excited to see what, what you guys are coming up with. I feel like you guys are build, like part of building the infrastructure, right, for this space. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see like Dune and all the other projects that are, that are working on this, um, where they're going and how they can make data super accessible for everyone. So thank you so much, Florian. I'm wondering, curious, how can people plug into the Dune system just for an outside uh, outsider coming into this video? I would love to know how can they plug themselves into the Dune community? So we have a great YouTube channel um, on which you can find a bunch of uh, podcasts that are actually hosted by me. There's a bunch of educational videos. We recently in December had a 12-day series of, of kind of going from I know nothing about Dune to I'm able to analyze Uniswap. So if you are curious to learn Dune, um, that's definitely a place to go. Um, then the Dune Discord is kind of our, um, that's, where, that's where everything happens. Um, that's where you'll find all the smart people. Um, discussing on-chain data. So that's definitely um, something to consider. Follow our Twitter. Um, and those are our, our main avenues. It's kind of the standard uh, Web3 <laughs> communication stack. I think you guys should check out the YouTube channel because I think podcasts are always the best to learn on the side, you know, if you want to learn about a topic. And we're going to link everything down below. And thank you so much, Florian. And thank you, everyone who tuned in. And we see you guys in the next episode of New Farm. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.